Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode eight of the Endless Blading Show. I'm Andrew, as always, joined by my wonderful co-host, Brad. And today, Hello. super excited to bring you a special guest, uh, Stephanie of Steffi Blading, uh, probably the best wizard uh, skater that we know, uh, period. Uh, and we're so happy to have you on, Stephanie. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Stephanie, uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, yourself and kind of your skating style? Uh, I want to point out Stephanie uh, did the artwork for the octopus frames. Uh, she's an incredible artist, among many, many other things, including an incredible skater. Uh, a couple customers have even asked, uh, you know, about the octopus frames since they're now out of stock. Sorry, limited run. Uh, but maybe if you ask uh, Stephanie hard enough, she'll do some more art for us in the future. But yeah, Stephanie, what, you know, how'd you get into skating? Kind of what are you into now uh, when it comes to skating? And, and uh, yeah, what's your, what's your style? So I, I've been skating all my life. I started in the nineties as a kid, just skating around. Uh, but I never, I didn't, I didn't use them for anything except for getting places. They were a mode of transportation for me. So it was just skating over my house and doing things like that. I didn't even think of using them for any other types of skating until very, very recently. So maybe like four years ago. Um, I, get, I guess I did, I did also do some figure skating in my teenage years. I did maybe two, three years of figure skating. And, but then I, I got pretty lazy about going to rinks, so I stopped doing that. Um, so, so I started, I picked up skating again. I had been doing it throughout the whole time, but I picked up when my daughter started being interested in it. And when she wanted a new pair of skates, I decided, okay, I should get a new pair also. And I started checking things out and I did some research, came across all these mentions of different genres and disciplines of skating now that I had not been aware of back then among which was slalom. And I saw this world-class slalom skater on YouTube and I saw that and I thought, I need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> because I'm also, I've also been a lifelong dancer. I did flamenco for 20 years or something. So mm -hmm. this kind of flow and movement and intricate footwork really appealed to me. So that's that's kind of my entry into things. I started doing slalom. I did that for two, two and a half years. And then I met Brad and I had heard about wizard skating. I had kind of dipped my toes a little bit into things, but I wasn't really interested or drawn into it until he handed me a pair of arc prototypes one day and said, try these out. <laughs> and that's and, why we're here today, right? That's what we're, so today's <laughs> show is gonna be episode eight, all about the arc CS, that's this guy. So yeah. we'll be getting into those, the details. Those are, those are the ones that got me started doing wizard skating then. <laughs> yeah, re really excited to talk about the the arc CS and, and talk uh, more with you, Stephanie. I uh, just want to make a quick interjection here from TS. Thanks everybody who's joining live uh, or watching this later and leaving us a comment. Uh, TS wants to ask you, Stephanie, uh, who is who is your inspiration? Who is that slalom skater uh, on YouTube that really inspired you to pick it up? You know, I, I actually don't even know who it was. I was just so fascinated by what he was doing that mm -hmm. I didn't even look at the name. <laughs> and it, I know it was, I know it was an Asian skater. I know mm -hmm. he was, I think he was Chinese. Um, and it was one of the competition, competition videos of him just doing this amazing routine, yeah. but saw that and just, that was, that was what really drew me in. So mesmerized, can't can't even remember the name. I yeah, <laughs> I was so mesmerized by the actual movement. I didn't even look at anything else. <laughs> yeah, but we, we are here. Yeah, talking about. Uh, I think the frame we're currently skating, Stephanie, uh, the Arc CS frame. Brad held up a, a great version there. Uh, so you know us at the Endless Team, and of course we all got our setups here. Um, but you know us at the Endless Team. We love to nerd out. Um, so yeah, Brad, tell tell us all about the the nerdy gritty details about the Arc CS. Yeah, and, uh, so. Yeah, yeah, let's let's about? get into this. So we're we're here today to discuss discuss all the design details and the development of these Arc CS five wheel frames. Um, Stephanie was a part of that. I also want to give um, a shout out to the rest of our design team. This was a design effort. Um, there was some really amazing skaters that were involved besides Stephanie. Uh, Andrew Yu, who is approximately in line. Um, hopefully, he'll pop up in the chat tonight. Um, 
Alana Carnavale. She was the skater in the in the the video that we created. If anybody saw that really amazing um, kind of combo ice skating and inline skating video that we put out on our YouTube channel, um, Ali Heiss, um, who's Alley Cat Skates. Um, who else? Uh, Summer, ro who's Roller Ray, um, and uh, David from D's Skates. Mm -hmm. um, helped uh, provide some really great feedback along the way. So let's jump into it. So what right. is what is the Arc CS? So Arc is the is our five is our series of five wheel frames that we created. You know, or, um, uh, we did an episode. I think it was was it episode two? Um, I think it, yeah, before, no, it no, or was it episode four? I can't even remember. We've done anyway, so many now. <laughs> an earlier episode we covered the development of the Arc and arc es frames which are the the longer version of our five wheel frame and i have one of those here but mm -hmm. the cs is is the little is the the shorter version of it um and it was designed specifically for smaller footed and female skaters um i wanted to give them we wanted to create something that was inclusive rather than exclusive um, so it's a 165 mount frame. Um, you know, it mounts, it's got uh, longitudinal slots. So we allow for some adjust front backs adjustment, which is really key uh, on some 165 boots like uh, rollerblade twister. Um, it's essentially a five by 72 millimeter equivalent. And what's that mean? That means that the, the spacing between the wheels is 73 millimeters just like it would be on a five by 72 frame. But what we do, which is unique on the Arc CS, is we alternate 76 millimeter wheels and 68 millimeter wheels, which are these kind of milky colored ones. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that does is that allows us to get the ride height lower um, while keeping, we have this short 73 millimeter pivot spacing or a total wheelbase of a 292 millimeters which is actually very similar to the wheelbase of our endless 90 ES frame, which is a four by 90 frame. Mm -hmm. um, and so that makes it um, just the overall proportions are much, um, much more fitting for somebody with a size 34 to 38 foot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, CS stands for compact scale. So the whole idea was to you know, make the overall proportions just more compact for people with smaller feet, namely women. Mm -hmm. um, and so what type of skating is this frame for? It's for wizard skating, flatland skating, and then also what I, would, what I like to call urban figure skating, or um, people might be familiar with the artistic inline skates um, that are kind of, they look like figure skates. They might have three or four wheels and a toe stop. Um, but they generally have really small wheels. They suck on any type of surface other than like uh, you know a tennis court or a basketball court or, part, or like a really nice parking lot. So mm -hmm. I wanted to allow those people that are interested in that type of skating, um, you know, um, give them an experience that um, maybe allows them to enjoy a little more freedom. Um, Let's see. Did I miss anything, guys? Is that is that does that cover the the general basics? Do we? Oh, uh, come on. What 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 about what about those axles on the end, Brad? Those look a little <laughs> special to me. Oh yeah, they? thanks. <laughs> um, so, like our other arc frames, the two outer wheels have uh, rocker axles, hmm. and these special axles allow you to have two different positions. So hmm. the wheel the the axle can you, you can see the little dot there on the bottom. Right now, the wheel is rockered down, which creates, this is like our default arc rocker. Um, it's very natural feeling. Um, it feels um, the most like the other arc five wheel frames. But you can also turn this, ax this axle so the dot faces up. And what that does is that gives you more rocker. And mm -hmm. what's unique um, about the arc CS is we have so when we sell this frame, it actually doesn't come with pink axles. I just put this together. So 
it would be easy on the video to see what's what. Um, but nor normally these rocker axles would be uh, black. Um, the Arc CS comes with the these silver ax rocker axles, which have a different amount of um, translation or displacement of the wheel. And so what that does is it allows you to get four different rocker settings. So with black, you can be have our least amount of rocker or the maximum amount of rocker. And with the silver rocker axle, you can get two in between settings. So it basically goes black down, silver down, silver up, black up to give you um, increasing amounts of rocker. Yeah, and unlike the other arc frames, right, the silver axles come, uh, yeah, stock with the CS frame. Yeah. Uh, that's because we really understand that those people who want to, you know, participate in that kind of artistic figure skating style, you know, that rocker can make such a huge difference, uh, you know, in, in your feel and style, even that. I think it's offset by what, like less than a millimeter, Brad, or something like that, like the the kind of gradient between these different rocker setups. I mean, it's very, very... But it different. feels... Yeah, feels I mean... Different. Yeah, right. I mean... Oh, go ahead, Stephanie. I was going to say that it, as for people coming from uh, experience with much shorter agile frames, such as um, or from figure skating, that black up is kind of the default, uh, the, the, the default setting that really appeals to us the most initially, especially because it feels most familiar to what we're used to with these, these very short and agile settings. Yeah. Yeah, so to answer your question, Andrew, um, the wheel basically travels, you know, zero to two millimeters when you flip. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. When you flip the black, everyone just imagine that these pink rocker axles are black. Right. Um, when you flip the silver rocker axle, it's, you know, less than that, Let, you know, somewhere around half that. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but that, those small differences in, in uh, you know, that rocker amount just really changes the overall feel of the frame and takes it from being kind of wizardy to more like Stephanie was saying, like more slalomy or figure skate um, esque. Right. Um, somebody asked here, uh, "What are those nice looking aqua wheels?" We'll <laughs> we'll get into the wheels in a little bit, but these are these were prototypes um, yeah. for what ultimately became the um, you know the cloud wheels. So and yeah, another point on that, Brad, too, right? It's not only, you know, you get the four different settings, uh, but you also can play with different settings between the toe and the heel, right? Because obviously on ice skates, you know, there there can be a slight difference there. Um, yeah, right. Like on a like on a figure skate, you'd actually would get, you know, in, oops, going the wrong way here. More <laughs> rocker, you'd have an increased rocker in the front, and then the back would have less rocker. So um, right. you know, we detail in our setup guide how you can kind of emulate an ice skate uh Kind of feel by you know rockering the front either all the way up or with silver up and then have the back black down or silver down um yeah i'm curious for you stephanie have you ever tried experimenting with different rockers on the front and back or have you always just kind of stuck with the symmetric style i've stuck with symmetrical uh i i haven't felt a need for one higher or lower yeah makes sense yeah we have a couple let's see we have a couple of quick questions here looks like it flares out the top yeah um the overall structural design, um, you know, is adapted from our, our bigger arc frames mm -hmm. like this one. Um, right. and they share some similar structural elements like the flare. Um, you'll see that on our Swan frame and also on our UFS frames. Um, so, you know, we have, yeah, a lot of the same, um, you know, these are meant to be highly responsive because they're so low. It's like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, rigidity in the structural design. Um, someone was asking, uh, are the rockerable axles the same size interchangeable with the arc and arc? Yes, yes. They are the exact same axle. Um, if you're, you know, pro tip, if you're ever in a pinch, you, you lose or damage one of our endless axles, you can replace it with the FR rocker axle. It's the one that fits the new, new-ish R2R frame. Um, it, they kind of have like a domed top to, to them. Um, let's see, where do we want to go from here? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to hear Brad how we settled or how you settled uh, mastermind. Uh, and from the feedback from other skaters too, 
on this kind of alternating wheel sizes and then also the size of those wheels, right? Because oh, yeah. it's it's separate from the the regular arc frame, right? Which is, you know, big and then three small, right? It's this alternating setup. So right. how'd, you, how'd you land there? Yeah. So I today, earlier today, I was digging back through the history and I always like to, you know, uh, I've probably said this on other episodes. I take copious notes when I'm designing all this stuff. So um, I was digging through text messages and photos and looking at the CAD models and to see to see uh, how this all came together. So basically, around the beginning of May 2022, it was right after we had finished up the arc frames. Um, I'm not sure we hadn't released the arc frames at that point, but they were like well into the, you know, we were putting them in, into production. And so I started thinking like, these just aren't suitable for people with smaller feet, like anyone, like I said, size 35 to 38 specifically, or somebody that's looking for a dancier, you know, even more agile five wheel experience. And so I kind of knew that I needed to find a way to make a, a shorter five wheel frame. And so my design goals were, I wanted to include smaller footed people, specifically women, because I mean, if we're being honest about it, if you make a product that's this long, it it looks ridiculous on a size 36 skate, and it's just way too cumbersome for, I'm going to say, 99.5% of women. Um, so that was like, you know, top of mind when I was doing this. I wanted the lot, the ride height. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Can I, yeah, can, yeah, I yeah. can I mention that no, I like no, to think no. that my no, slalom no. friends and I, uh, three of us are, are women, kept poking Brad for years saying, make smaller frames, make smaller frames. And we had this back and forth where he's like, no, big is good, big is good. And we said, no, we want smaller ones. Well, I think, <laughs> think you, <of> us. <laughs> when I was saying big is good, I was thinking about like the wheel size, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but classic Brad. Brad's like, yeah, I really wanted to make it. No, <laughs> Stephanie, you, you and your friends. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like it, we we met in the middle with this because we were we were talking about our slalom frames and how we enjoyed the shorter frames and that experience. And he was talking about how the length, how longer frames and bigger are are an enjoyable experience as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when he first handed me the arcs, I was very skeptical because I looked at it and I said, it's it's a ninety. It's a 90, uh, it's four by 90 wheelbase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't super thrilled so far with my four by 90 experiences as far as my ability to do the kind of footwork that I wanted to do and my agility with them. And so when, when he handed these to me, I was like, okay, I'll give these a try. I don't know if I'm gonna like them or not, but I'll give them a try, give them my feedback. And the, the first session with them, I was, shocked and amazed at how little I noticed them. Like I didn't, it, it didn't get in the way of me doing what I wanted to do. In fact, I felt like it kind of expanded the range of what was, what could be achieved uh, with the types of movements that I wanted to do. And it, it came as a big surprise to me because I, I looked at that wheelbase and my initial thought was there's no way I'm going to be as agile or able to do the kinds of spinny things that I like to do. And it, it did though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's an excellent point. Um, Daniel's jumping in here and, and, uh, wondering what made you choose this, this wheel configuration instead of 76 is on the outside 68. Um, I'm going to get to it. I have a, yeah. a flow here. So we're 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 about to get there so um yeah it's such a so great yeah. Point, yeah the the spacing brad's wheel selection i think really did that yeah yeah so besides the low ride height i knew that i wanted the speed to be good like i feel like with all endless frames there's kind of like design priority number one is it has to have the fun factor like you have to be able to like skate it the first time andrew and i you know every time we try try this stuff. It's always like, is there anything that annoys us right off the bat or feels off? But if we can just go out and skate and not think about the gear, then we know that like maybe we're on the right track. Um, so yeah, so I thought you have to be able to, like part of me thinks, okay, people, some people are going to buy a frame for a specialized application. Like they're going to buy a five wheel frame because they only want a wizard skate or something. 
or they only want to do artistic, you know, figure skatery stuff. Um, but I also realize that there's a lot of people that are, you know, spending $300 on a skate frame is a lot of money and this might be the only skate frame they buy. So I was like, it needs to not suck if somebody wants to take this on a group skate with their friends and their friends all have four by 90 or three by, you know, 110 setups. Um, and so, yeah, had to have the fun factor roll smooth. Um, I wanted it to have, you know, an ice skate type of feeling in certain configurations. And then I also wanted it to be low weight. So, so that way there would be good acceleration and just good freedom of movement and responsiveness. So I started talking with Andrew, who is approximately in line, who had been involved intimately with the, the other arc frames. And we bounced a bunch of ideas back and forth. And, um, the first, my first thought was, why don't I do eighties on the outside and 72s in the middle? Like, let's just take the arc concept that we had with the 84s and the 76 and just drop them down a wheel size. Mm -hmm. So I took my arc frame. I was curious, like, would these, would this feel decent to just skate around on? Mm -hmm. So I put these wheels on, on an arc frame like this. Um, and I skated it and it sucked. It, it just like the rocker felt great, but it was slow. And what I realized was 72 millimeter wheels, they just do not carry momentum. And so I knew that we had to change something. Um, so we started discussing like, well, what if we had, um, I, I basically needed to get the average wheel size up. Oh man, my the uh, the Instagram live stream just died. No, <laughs> sorry, Instagram friends. Catch us on YouTube later. Or Brad can maybe revive the the stream right yeah, now. Yeah, let's see if I can. I'll try and get it back real fast here. Um, um, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> let's see. Oh, we're back. Okay, we're back. There we I'm go. Gonna try not to get banned. Um, the internet. So anyway, I was trying to get the average wheel size up, but these other concepts that I've got up here with the 80s and 68s, 76s and 72s, they were still kind of a long wheelbase. And I knew that for somebody with a real short foot, that that still might be a little unwieldy. So that's basically where um, this 76, 68, 76, 68, 76 concept came from. And so this is what it looks like on a size 35 to 37 shell. This is an FR1 intuition. And when I saw this, you know, I like to make little paper mock-ups. I was like, okay, this looks appropriately scaled. Like you can imagine if this was a size 40 boot and this is a normal arc frame, it would look kind of exactly like this, but just like scaled up. Um, and so then I put it on the next size up boot, which was 38, 39. And I was like, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Um, so what I liked about the alternating wheel sizes was it maintained this, you know, this even, um, let's see, do I have another, another slide here? Oh yeah, we'll get to that. Um, it maintained, you know, uh, a nice even pivot spacing, um, which makes for a really intuitive rocker. Um, when you start having a big deviation between uh, when you do like we did on the other arc frames and you get like a big deviation between the wheel sizes, the rocker can feel a little, um, a little tweaky. So, um, so yeah, I, this was really starting to take shape um, just around the end of May in 2022. Um, you know, we started, I, I also, one of the considerations was, is I wanted the wheels to be um, readily available. And so both of these sizes, I found that you could get in both bullet and round profiles. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever told anyone this publicly, but I ended up buying up the entire world supply of FR 68 millimeter Street Invader wheels, <laughs> just so we would have them all hoarded and available for the launch of this frame. Um, but it quickly became apparent to us that we needed to also uh, develop, you know, make our own wheels. So kind of concurrently, we started getting some wheels made, which ultimately became, you know, the, the cloud wheels. Um, let's see. Uh, 
we talked about the rocker axles a little bit. Um, that gave a lot of flexibility. So we started to make some prototypes. We got this first batch of, was this four sets of frames and I sent them out to um, a bunch of people in early of July, 2022. Um, and Stephanie was one of those people. Actually, she skated, if I, if I recall, you skated this actual frame, I gave you mine. And, um, and then you didn't give it back for a very long time. <laughs> Well, we had to we had to swap it with three people. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah, this was my first the 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 first time I went skating on this. Is this is the setup I put together? And um, yeah, I remember thinking, "Damn, this thing! It feels like an ice skate." I'm not an ice skater, but from my recollection of going ice skating, I was like, it instantly evoked that feeling to me. And I was actually surprised, being a size. 40 42 you know a two i have a 270 millimeter foot i was surprised at how comfortable that this setup felt um it was super agile but it still felt just like really natural and it i yeah i had a really good first skate um so let's when see I, Go when ahead. i was where when i was trying the the prototypes i was wearing them uh in a in a in a space where there were lots of quad skaters, so most of them didn't didn't realize what I was using. For they noticed that the wheels were bright green, and so they they asked me about it. But I kept getting these comments saying that it looked like I was ice skating, which is not something that they say to me when I'm skating in general with my other frame setups. But to the the outside observer, I, th I thought this was interesting that to the outside observer, just watching me even try these out in the initial stages, that was the impression that they got from looking at how I was skating with them. Yeah, no, that's really cool that they could just tell, yeah, from the way the foot moves, yeah. Andrew, when did, um, when did you try them? Oh, gosh. Um, I think I was on the latter end of the, the prototypers because you had gotten there are people much more qualified like Stephanie to, <laughs> to really, you know, evaluate the artistic skating style. Um, so I, I tested them out on, I think on the tail end, maybe that fall kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing I noticed too, Brad is, yeah, it's just, it was a super fun skate, right? Like that fun factor is there. It, it gives that kind of extra pivot and that kind of extra smoothness of an ice skate. Um, yeah. Yeah. The so, rocker, I, I find that because the, the pivot spacing is even tighter than what's on the other arcs, it just feels, mm -hmm super smooth throughout the rocker yeah. but it's surprisingly fast oh something yeah something to touch on regarding the speed is what i found is that the 76 millimeter wheels kind of dominate the speed and i knew from you know the other arc frames we developed that um 76 are kind of like a magic sweet spot for wheel size in a lot of mm -hmm. ways um um yeah, I want to touch on the wheels real quick, but let me just um, get through the end of my little presentation here. So we, we ended up receiving uh, the production frames around the second week of January 2023, and then we finally announced them um, April 19th of 2023, um, and that's when they went on sale. And uh, the only reason I waited so long was because I wanted to announce the Endless 90 UFS frames first. So those got announced in February and we just waited. Um, but we, we made that amazing video, uh, you know, it's on our website um, with Alana. And then the ARC CS frames are actually featured a lot in the video that we sponsored with Ari Bortz, the stuttering skater. Uh, that video is called, um, I should call it a film. It really is a proper film. Um, that's called Calculated Risk. We have that in our playlist or you can go to the stuttering skater and, and watch that. Um, and see them in action. Um, and you can see that they are not slow at they all. They are not slow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about wheels. So Stephanie was part of the, the wheel prototyping as well. Like we ended up getting, um, let's see if I've got a 68 millimeter float around back here. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I don't know if people can see this, these, the 68 and the 76, they share the exact same core size. And so uh, what that does is this ends up being a really stiff wheel because I like to call this a skinny tire. Um, you know, fat tire would be, 
something like something like this a street invader where you've got like a lot of urethane relative to the size of the core but um skinny tire wheels tend to be very very stiff and so what that did was that kind of helped bring up the speed um they wrote you know these roll really fast and also create like a really defined responsive pivot on the second and fourth wheel and so we ended up having uh four different versions of these wheels made um there was four different uh, two different types of urethane formulas and then two hardnesses each and that's that's where these turquoise wheels come from and andrew's got on his he's got one of the He's got the one that we can we decided was the crappiest feeling one. <laughs> yeah, the slowest. I mean, that that was one of the key yeah factors for us was definitely yeah speed and just feel and responsiveness. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, what else about wheels? Um, that was it. That's that's it on the wheels. Why don't we uh, let's try and catch up on some of these comments here? Um, I just yeah, want to give sure. a shout out to everybody on the. Uh, the Instagram live stream who's hanging hanging with us. Sorry we got cut off for a minute there. It was this weird there's this weird warning that popped up that I hadn't seen before where Instagram said there was automated activity detected on my account and they were going to like <laughs> ban me or put a, put a like a I don't know. Something something bad is going to happen to my account so I, I think I probably need to watch out. Um, are you even real, Brad? Are you the AI, Brad? Is that what this is? <laughs> I'm the AI version. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's let's pop up some of these comments. So um, yeah, for sure. Let's see. Uh, so Bruna says it accelerates really fast. It, it does. It really does. So the smaller wheels are excellent for acceleration. Um, you know, like a 72 millimeter wheel doesn't carry momentum, but it does accelerate and. Um, you know, with our, I would say our 68 feels like a Street Invader 72 in terms of speed. Um, so yeah, the overall speed of the frame is, you know, between the stiff the stiff wheels and the, the stiff frame, it, it actually feels very, very fast and accelerates really quickly. Um, Drew from City Blades, what's up, Drew? Um, no, we're not making 78A wheels. <laughs> I think it's a little too soft, but thanks for the suggestion um all right let's see what else let's let's get to some some of uh some other topics here um before you before you move on i think there were some earlier comments from people asking if if uh for larger sizes like 42 and 44 if arccs was also a usable uh thing to emulate ice experience and i think i think you should point out that that it's it's not it's not just for small footed women but it is no. for anyone who wants that kind of that kind of agility and that kind of swivelly experience yeah i would say the distinction i would make is if you're looking for something super agile and playful then arccs is suitable for all foot sizes right because it does effectively have the wheelbase of our 90 ES frames, which is the frame that we designed for big footed skaters. So in terms of like your front to back stability, it's sufficient for all foot sizes. Um, but I would say if you're specifically looking to wizard skate or do flow skating or flatland skating or whatever you want to call it, then you're best, you're, you're better suited looking at our longer, bigger arc frames which are gonna have a wider pivot spacing and an even longer wheelbase and larger wheel sizes, that's gonna give you the tempo that's more appropriate for that style of skating. Um, but for, yeah, if, if you're a size 44 and you just wanna tear it up like you're on hockey skates, then yeah, arc CS all day long. Yeah, and, and, and on that note too, you know, Stephanie, you, you said you, really got back into skating because of slalom. I guess, you know, when do you go for kind of your more traditional slalom setups? Obviously, I guess when you're doing slalom versus when you're doing more of that kind of artistic flow. But for you, what's kind of the the difference between the two, right? Because the slalom frames, at least for me, I imagine is like very pivoty, you know, very obviously easy to maneuver and that sort of thing. 
But for you, when do you go for one or the other and, and kind of what's the biggest difference for you between the two? Well, when I'm doing slalom specifically, if I have mm -hmm. cones, then right. I don't really want the slalom frames because the the length of the the frame does come into play with that then because I, gotcha. I can feel myself clipping my toe or heel if I try some of the really tight footwork on the spacing that you need for cones, which is 80, 80 centimeters, mm -hmm. which is approximately like this. Um, uh, yeah, very, very and, and then there's even a shorter distance. There's a shorter distance that you could do with slalom, which is 50 centimeters, which is really tight. That's like, yeah. Yeah. like this far apart, it's like shoulder width. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So you, there's there's no way you could do that kind of slalom. Well, maybe you could, <laughs> but I cannot. My my skill level with slalom is not that I could do it with that frame length. So if I'm going to be doing actual slalom, I typically want to go for my shorter frames. Also, if I'm in a very much dancey flow state of mind then I want those as well because mm -hmm. I feel like I can be a little bit more expressive with my lines in a different way than I do with the wizard type of frame. Those are those take up more space. They're great for when I have the full rain, the, the full area that I can I can move in and I don't have mm -hmm. to be weaving in and out of other dancing people. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of skate parties here in the Bay Area. So there's a lot of, most, and most of these are dominated by quad skaters. And so I don't want to be, I don't want to be taking up too much in those kinds of settings. And so when I do that, then I want definitely the short little frames for those. Yeah, it makes sense. But in terms yeah. of, in terms of how much agility and how much swivelliness I can get out of them, I don't feel any lack. It's it's more that it is a little bit more spread out when I gotcha. kind of, when I use the arc frames versus the slalom frames. Yeah, it makes sense. So here's a kind of related question for you, Stephanie. Did you use any of the other endless frames prior to the arc CS? Like, were you on the endless eighties at any point? I, I was on the endless nineties. I never tried the eighties. I did the nineties, which I enjoy a lot for trail skating. And I use the, the 110 setting, especially for long stretches of trails. Those are great. There's a lot of shoreline things that we could do around here or around some of the reservoirs where it's not quite completely smooth. So having these giant wheels is great for that. And I did, I did initially, so that was, that was actually how I first met Brad was because I, I had the arc, uh, I had the uh, endless nineties that I was playing around with. And I found out about wizard skating at that point. And I think I kind of dabbled in it a little bit, but it just didn't appeal to me greatly when I was attempting to do the, the tricks with the, the endless nineties. Uh, just for me, I mean, I know there are wizard skaters out there that do amazing things with four by nineties, four by one hundreds, but for my experience and where I was coming from, it wasn't something that clicked well versus, like I said, the first time I tried the ArcCS, it just immediately felt like there was no barrier between what I wanted to do and what my feet were doing. It just, it just immediately happened. So it was a, it was a big difference in how that felt to me. So I, I yeah, the endless nineties. And then there were some other various prototypes that you threw my way. The, over the span of those few years. <laughs> yeah. But I think the the arc was the only one that made it to the the finish line here, at least so far. Do you <laughs> do you ever have any interest in trying the larger arc frames? Like the right I think the regular arc would probably be Yeah, I I actually was thinking that recently because Initially, as I said, I, I came from very short frames. I mean, I started off with four by 70, four by 76 is, was what I initially used for slalom. And then I'm a size 38. Um, my other female friends and I were looking, we were looking at all these videos on Instagram of, of some of these skaters, male skaters with average size feet and four by eighties looked really short on their skate. Like some of them barely even cleared the toes. Yeah, right. With the, mm -hmm. with the end of the wheels. And we're looking at our four by 76s, four by 80s on ours, where it's like half the wheel is sticking out still. And so I decided to try a two, 219 wheelbase instead mm -hmm. for, for my foot size, which still actually is sticking out about a 
about half an inch on either end of my boot. So it still is actually, it's, it's still longer than what we see many male skaters have. So I was, so that that's actually my current setup is a 219 uh, freestyle frame for my slalom skating. Right. And so that compared to, compared to ARC is, what, what was the original question here? I forgot, I lost track. Oh, just whether <laughs> you had interest trying the, the regular ARC frame, like do you- Oh, that's right, yeah. So I came from, I came from a two, 219 wheelbase to now, what is this? A 291, two, right on this, 291, yeah. right. 292, yeah. So initially that, yeah. that felt daunting, but, and I was only using it in the black up setting, this, the highest rocker setting. So this is the the most rockered yep. that you can use them in. And over time, as I've been using them over this past year, I've gradually shifted now to silver up is actually my favorite, my favorite setting. My default. Why? Because as I use them more, so initially black up was the most familiar to me when you compare it to my experience skating on a rockered. To 19. Yeah, so, I mean, effectively, you're creating like a little rockered tri skate in the middle with, you know, a yeah. slalom feel outside <laughs> of that. Yeah. And and when I've spoken to other other figure skaters who've come to start using rock the, the arcs, they also typically prefer the black up as their as their setting because, as I said, it's the most familiar to to us for that very very agile feel we want. And so that's that's what I was using for a while. And now I've shifted gradually to, because as, as I'm experimenting more with, with the wizard style, I want that much more grounded feel. So when the black up, when you have black up, you're very, very civil and you can spin and you can do all this stuff, but it doesn't feel as, as in contact with the ground um, because of course you're not because your, your wheels are actually up on the ends. Yeah. <laughs> so you you lose that sense of feeling really grounded. And so shifting now to silver up, I get more of that contact feel. And I found also that over time, my natural wear pattern is to reduce the amount of rocker that I have. If I just if I just skated and didn't sh and I didn't change my wheels around, what mm -hmm. I end up with is eventually a much flatter, uh, a but a much flatter general rocker on my skate, but that's actually not what I prefer. I actually like it to be a little bit more than that. Yep. So it's actually handy for me to have the black axle still because once I get my wheels worn down a bit, I shift to the black up again. Yep. <laughs> and it gives yeah. me more of the experience of the fresh wheels that are with the silver up. So yeah, let's... So, but the, uh, to, to get to your actual question there, <laughs> so because now I, I feel like I, I enjoy that experience more, I actually was thinking that maybe the regular arcs would be appealing to me as well now that I'm more into this longer frame feel and how that that experience is, yeah. that having an, even a slightly longer frame might actually be something that is that would advance my, my, my style or a skill or what I was doing with, as far as wizard skating goes. Well, we can definitely uh, make that happen. I know a guy, so. <laughs> How do you? <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely be curious how you perceive the difference, especially after you've had a chance to like get familiar with it and reacclimate. Cause at first I think you're going to be like, this is so long and there's no, and like, <laughs> where's my mega rocker? I mean, the distance between the arc CS to the regular arc is less than the 290 to 219, I think, right? That's true. Yeah. It's not that much, <laughs> but it's amazing. Like, yeah, just how, you know, a centimeter, you know, makes such a huge difference in the feel of the frame. Um, you touched on, you know, wheel rotation. Let's talk about that. What, what is your preferred wheel rotation pattern? So at first I was doing a lot of swapping. I was taking out all the wheels and, and measuring them. So my personal wear pattern is a little weird. I find that my left toe and my right heel oh. are the most worn out. So it's not evenly on the toes or the heels. So it's like, it's like this, it's like, <laughs> so, so it, 
I, at first I was writing, I was taking all the wheels out and I was measuring them and writing them and kind of trying to do this mixing and figuring out where each one should go to get the next wear level for them. Um, but then after the third or fourth wheel rotation, I would lose track of what had been where initially. Yeah. And it just got really confusing. And so now all I do is I actually just take the, I just swap. I basically take everything here and move them over to the other side. Mm -hmm. And you mean from it, left frame to right frame? Yep, left frame just, to right frame. You just go straight across. It, sometimes if I'm really lazy, I'll actually just take off the whole frame and, and just yeah. move the frame over. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Stick it on so you don't even do yes. like a front to back swap because like no longer yeah because it, it can be a little bit too insane because um my my front like i said it's my my front left and my back right um so having to keep track of where each one was for that just mm -hmm. got really confusing and then and then figuring out the middle one as well so that's why i said that in the end what i discovered when i start doing this is that my wheel my wheel wear ends up if I if I just keep switching left and right, yeah. Then what happens is that my overall rocker decreases mm -hmm. as my wheels get worn down, and I, I generally wear them down by about a centimeter. <laughs> I go down from seventy six <laughs> yeah, to to like sixty five on the big ones. <laughs> how, how how are your wheels looking right now? Let's see on your skate right now. Let's see. I think they're, they're they've still got a lot of life. Oh yeah, those aren't looking too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they got some nice wear. Yeah. You can yeah. you can see the I difference mean, in the gap. I th yeah. I think what I you know recommend in the setup guide is taking the first wheel and the last wheel, swap those, swap two and four, and then um actually what do I what do I recommend, Andrew? I think I recommend going front to back on the other skate, back to front on the opposite skate, and then do you know cross two and four or across the skate and then just take the center one and go straight across. I think yeah. I think that's what I did initially. I think yeah. that's what I was doing at the very beginning uh, before I realized how how diagonally opposite my wear was. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think that happens for me because I do a lot of spinning and most of my spinning is when I'm doing the the toe healings toe heel spins, I'm going I'm going counterclockwise, and so that tends to wear um, unevenly on the toe and heel, as well as a lot of the other kind of rotational spinny things that I do. So some of the toe pivots, I, I tend to, I guess I tend to do left toe pivot more than right is probably what happens there, like, or yeah. maybe my yeah. right heel pivots are happening more, but it's, it's somehow, somehow that, that wear pattern is happening. And I noticed it across all my frames, so it's not just yeah. with the arcs this happens with all my my solemn setups too so i'm clearly using my skills unevenly on on each side but it it evens out and i found that just just like i said just switching from left to right is the easiest method and it maintains the rocker fairly well so yeah. it's fairly easy to do that yeah, yeah that, that's a that's a great point that everybody's you know wear pattern is different so yeah it's great that I, I I love that you took out and measured each individual wheel. I thought Brad was the only one that did that. So I, I don't do it because I rotate. So I'm like, if I get the slightest bit of cone, like you know, yeah, you're... Be like a millimeter more flat on one side of the wheel than the other, then I then I rotate. Yeah. I that, mean, if you really want the rocker to always stay the same, like rotate like every other session. I I generally I notice my my front and back wheels are the ones that that get the most of that that chiseled look mm -hmm. because probably because they're they're taking the most the, the brunt of the the edge curves as mm -hmm. we're as i'm skating with them so i tend i do rotate those more often than i rotate the middle three so I, i'll swap the front two or i'll swap the back two as soon as i notice the that chiseled look to it or an unevenness then then i move them over and that that happens maybe three times as often as I have to switch out the middle the middle three wheels. But it's fairly easy to do just the front or just the back like that. Yeah. And I do that maybe once every three or four sessions. Yeah. yeah. And somebody yeah. somebody in the comments, Stephanie, is uh, is praising your method for the Swan frame as well. Which, yeah, any of the you know different wheel setup frames can sometimes be a little bit trickier to to rotate wheels on. But 
Yeah, I think if you have a wear pattern like Stephanie, that's a great hack. So yeah. for the for this one. The I really think cool. uh, approximately inline mentioned, I think he also does a similar similar mm -hmm. thing for his yeah. for the, his five wheels. Yeah. I think the reason that I think people get worried that the that the um you know the mixed wheel frames are gonna have rotation problems. What what but what ends up what ends up happening is when you have bigger wheels on the outside, like for most people, you tend to, you know, wear your outside wheels more just from like, you know, carving and doing turns. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have a bigger wheel, it, it rotate, it goes through less revolutions for like a given amount of skating distance or time. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the wear on a bigger wheel is technically less than the wear on the smaller wheel. So mm -hmm. it kind well, of my, like compensates. My middle wheel actually takes the most wear strangely oh the center one yeah the center one well, yeah okay. I've, I've sent you some of the photos of yeah. when i'm done with that's the the wheels that's <laughs> when true. i'm when i'm ready to shift out to the the new set and my middle wheel tends to be much smaller than my external ones but like i said with the just with just swapping left and right it it keeps things simple because if i'm worried about the middle wheel being constantly the smallest then then it has to be this crazy like yeah. <laughs> rotation yeah. around the around all the spots in order to get them get them to be evenly done yeah here's a this is a question that i just keep getting i've noticed a number of people have asked about this and some people in the uh the instagram chat have asked this too mm -hmm. um arc cs for ufs what do you do we think that there's really uh, a case to be made for this like should should we pursue this like stephanie do you have thoughts on this i have never skated ufs um i do have an aggressive skating friend who is very interested in that though <laughs> he just, he tried he tried out the the regular arcs and he said that they were too long for his taste Interesting. Yeah, in I, I think, and yeah. he was also very interested in the ability for a a uh, a deeper rocker on them. And this okay. is a this is a guy who's mostly aggressive and urban skating. So at least one uh, one data point there for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm just gonna make a guess here, but. I think most people that have UFS boots and are looking to do things other than uh, aggressive skating on them are mostly men. Do we all agree that that's a fair statement? I, I, just don't, I just don't that's think a big there's. Right? I just don't think there's that many women with UFS boots that aren't doing aggressive skating. Like mm -hmm. who? Who's buying? What small footed person is buying a UFS boot because they just want to recreationally skate? That right? that's a fair point, but I, I think Stephanie is on to something here with the U, UFS skating crowd, right? Is used to kind of shorter frames in general. So if you're like, yeah, they're, hey, they're used to, a, then you, they're also used to tiny wheels as well. Right. Yeah, but exactly. The, but yeah. I think that the people that are looking for a five wheel frame, they're looking specifically to do wizard skating. I think guys like to dance too, Brad. Yeah, guys do like to dance. That's true. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it draw, you know, let us know what you think in the comments. Like if you think we should make Arc CS for UFS, let me know. I don't I don't want to make something that I'm only gonna sell like 10 of. <laughs> fair, fair. Because I, I think my... what I think is the, the, the question there is um if you're thinking that it's guys wanting to do wizard skating, then no, there's not really much of a point to it. But if you're, if, as Andrew says, guys like to dance also. And I think that but they want something name, that... Name me a UFS boot that's nice and dancey. Anyone? <laughs> Come on, Drew, the boot. Drew. has to do with the skater. Like yeah, I said, Drew, there's, there's a guy I do know Drew that wants to do a, that. Got some input on this. <laughs> All right, Brad. But here, here's here's the other question. What about what about Trinity? Does Trinity get <laughs> does Trinity get CS? Now think? that's a better question. I think Trinity should get ArcCS before UFS. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because oh, you think a... that more women skate Trinity than UFS. Yeah. All right. Hey, what's up? What's up, Andrew? Andrew just joined. Um, oh, nice. Nice. Random question. Can you jam a 76 middle, 76 in the middle of a, U, a UFS version? You're going to have to tell me what you mean by that. I'm not sure I follow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, let me, let me know. Um, so Drew has thoughts. The forthcoming wizard skates, I guess. Oh, I yeah, because they're UFS. Yeah. They're UFS, but they're, they look to me just, they look very similar to the old Seba CJ in terms of the overall size. Like they don't look, I don't know, they don't look dancey, but yeah. we can, we can definitely debate that. And I think if, <laughs> I think if there's a, if there's, yeah, if there's a good, you know, use case, um, I'm all for, I'm all for making it. As you know, Endless is about making frames for our friends. So if enough of you guys tell me that that's what you need, then that's what we make. That that's a that's a great motto. Uh, yeah. Brad, another question we get all the time. I'd love to touch on here. Okay. Um, the customers always write in. They're like, "Should I get the regular arc frame or the CS frame or the ES frame?" Because they see right, they see arc, and they're like, "Okay, yeah. I want an arc frame." And so there's these three options, right? So, so what should people think about when they're you know thinking about the difference between these frames? Yeah, I, mean, I think a lot about it, but yeah, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier. Yeah. I would say figure out are you are you specifically trying to do wizard skating or flow skating? If the answer is yes, and you are at size 39 or larger, then you should look at arc or arc ES. Mm -hmm. If you are any size foot and you're looking for something super agile with a really intuitive rocker, something that feels like an ice skate experience, whether you're looking to dance, you're looking to do artistic stuff some kind of weird hybrid of slalom and wizard skating you're just getting freaky on the basketball court then arc cs i think is what you want to look at yeah that's a that's a great point yeah um, I, I love the cs frames i think they're like the more playful brother of the endless 84. The endless 84 is like a, a great solid frame but the the arc cs is like i would choose the arc cs over it because i just like the extra wheelbase yeah it's yeah. like you know i'm an old man now and i don't want to fall again <laughs> um um <laughs> Dan daniel says uh for mid forbidden mods would emerge for ufs cs frame h blocks and sliders maybe um mm -hmm. i still don't know who's actually doing stuff on frames with <laughs> five wheel frames with h block i i I don't know. I don't get it. I want to say also that one of the things that the long that a long wheelbase allows you an advantage over super short slalom type frames is is that the length allows you to really push into your the edges, really sink into them because you can you can let your body move forward and back. Um, in a way that would just send you over your toe or heel if you have a short frame versus staying still grounded while you're leaning into these, these deep edges and carves. And that is the appeal of these longer frames and the stylistic differences that it allows you to skate with. Yeah, that's, that's a really elegant way to put it. For yeah. Sure. I got a question for you, Stephanie. So, this there's a bigger question here that we can that I want to discuss. I want to discuss. Um, yeah. Yeah, George's yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it does feel good. really good. Um, I want to get into the inf like we. I think we've been seeing this last year. Like more women get into wizard skating and flatland skating. Um, what are your thoughts on? Like, where would you steer? Let's say another female skater that might have a size thirty-seven foot. Do you think she should be looking at a short compact frame like the Arc CS? Or do you think that she should be looking at something that's like five by 80 because that's seen as more of a traditional wizard skating thing? Or maybe it's, you know, there's some pull to be like, you're a real wizard skater if you've got like a five by 80 frame, right? But if you've got like a little dancey Arc CS frame, are you, are you really a wizard skater? <laughs> So honestly, like I don't, I don't know what a five by eighty feels like. I haven't tried that, so I can't really speak to that. But I would say it would depend on what her prior experience was with skating. If 
if they were coming at it completely blank slate, then you know any any frame is going to be interesting and it's going to be an experience that is going to be enjoyable. But if you're coming at it with certain expectations on how your movements should interact with the ground, like how like what your what your foot can do, then you know, for example, as I was saying, with I'm coming from slalom or or someone's coming from figure skating, then definitely the Arcs DS is the most natural transition into these other styles of skating. Yeah, that, yeah that's that well makes played. a lot of sense. And ha have you seen, like, since you started taking up, you know, kind of this more wizard style artistic skating, have you been able to influence some of your other friends to, to try out that kind of skating? I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, no, yeah. it's, it's definitely something that when, when people see me doing it, they, what is that? What, what, what is this? What's the style of skating that you do? Like I said, most of the skaters around me, there's a, there's a huge quad skating jam dance population here. Mm -hmm. And a large number of them are shocked to see me do any sort of footwork on inline skates. They always, I always get the comment of, I didn't know you could do that with inlines. I thought that that was just a quad thing that you could do. And a number of them have actually said, I think I'd like to maybe pick up inline skating because that looks really cool and that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's definitely something that I think more and more people are opening their, their minds to because it's just not even on their level of awareness initially. Right. Yeah, and encourage everybody in the chat and watching this later on, go check out Stephanie's Instagram. She has some awesome videos on there and, and great tutorials too. And I have to say that I feel like Stephanie has pioneered some really awesome wizard moves mm -hmm. and inspired a bunch of the boys to try and learn the tricks that she's doing. Like. You are the person, I, people might not know this, but you brought the, is, correct me if I'm wrong, the fan vault is the <laughs> solo move. Yes. You brought that into the wizard skating vernacular of tricks, right? Vocabulary of tricks. Uh, at, at least, I think so. I don't know. I, I believe you did. <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah. If, it, if anyone else was doing it before, they weren't, it wasn't really an obvious thing yet. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a move that I'd been working on in slalom with cones specifically. And, and actually my friend, uh, Wayne, he's, he's a woo skates on, on Instagram. He's, and he's actually the person that I learned a lot of wizard skating from. He saw, he saw me doing that and we were just kind of, we were just kind of tossing ideas back and forth about kinds of that would overlap well between slalom and, and wizard because we were skating all the time together. And that was, he saw me doing that on my slalom skates and he's like, show me how to do that. I want to, I want to do that move. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was showing him all these different cross-legged spin rotation moves that are used in, in slalom. And I think actually we showed you some too when we were skating I, at Stanford at one time. My, my body <laughs> does not want to bend that way. <laughs> but the, the fan vault was the one that, that he actually identified it initially as as like a really good contender for crossover and and so we started working on that and trying to play with how the entry of that would work and how how it would how it would gel with wizard skating and the moves that that we do with that kind of style yeah so yeah it's it's fun to see the overlap and see the inspiration from different areas coming into into wizard i love that wizard skating this big melting pot of different genres of skating. There's a lot of people that come at it from aggressive backgrounds, I feel like, and yeah, so that initially. has influenced yeah. a lot of it. But there are also all these other skating styles that have, that have input that could be added to this mix to make something really cool. I think, yeah, I think, I think having more of a female input into the genre is, I think opening up new creative avenues, like when you only see like the aggressive perspective for so many years, you think, oh, that's the only way I can do these moves. But then when someone like you comes along and you have totally different upper body movements and arm movements, and you're incorporating all these like 
freestyle slalom elements, I think it makes people go like, oh, I never, I didn't think think about approaching something like that before. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, yeah, I think it's just really neat to, to see all these different influences and, uh, and yeah, as you, as you said, I think a lot of, so I was, I was thinking just the other day that so many of the, the guys I know that do wizard skating, at least the ones that I personally know locally around here, most of them have some kind of aggressive skating background. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of skating that they did when they were kids or even more recently. And that's, that's kind of the, the motive, like the prime influence and inspiration for most of their wizard styling and their moves versus the stomp I, landing. The, the what? The stomp landing. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the jumps and a lot of playing yeah. with the urban landscape. Yeah. which is definitely something that I'm not as comfortable with yet. And I'm trying to play with and trying to explore is to really integrate the, the physical obstacles around me into my flow. Um, Andrew, you do, you do some of that really well. Like all Thank the, you. all the curbs, the curb riding stuff that you do. <laughs> that's always, I, I always see those and I think I want to try doing that. And then I try it and I realize how hard it is for me. <laughs> So, so there are aspects of, of skating when you have that kind of background that makes that, that is easy, easier um, versus someone like me coming at it and trying those. And then it's really, it's really hard for me to even just do like a curb stall. And that's something that I have to work up to the, the, bra the bravery to try that, to try that little jump or, or stair, stair bashing and riding and doing those things. So those elements come with more difficult to me, difficulty to me versus things like edges, though, and doing something like, you know, the lions and, and gazelles, those come naturally with the experience that I have. And as well as melding other types of moves that have this kind of swivelly or spinny action to it, because that's my background. And so those things come easier. So Steph, on a scale of one to 100, how core are you? How core? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that? How many core, how many core points do you have? <laughs> I don't even know what a core point is. <laughs> I, think, I think that answers the question, which is you, you don't, you really don't have to have apparently, any- Apparently background. zero core points. <laughs> you really don't have to have any aggressive back, background to come into wizard skating. <laughs> How many core points do you have, Andrew? I don't. <laughs> Dude, he can I think I know more. what it means. I think I have like <laughs> forty, right? I don't know. <laughs> hey, Nicholas Swan's in the house. Oh, what's yeah. up, Nicholas? Thanks for hey, saving us from Brad's. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have to chat this week. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so exciting. What was I going to say? Um, so speaking of core points, let's talk about arms. So one of the things that I noticed that you do completely different, like that, or that's completely different about your style of skating is that your arms are so much more controlled than a lot of men who wizard skate, who do a lot of the, the, the flappy tube guy arms. Um, where, tell us about, how you think about your upper body movements. So I mentioned briefly earlier, I have a dance background. I've, I've danced flamenco for 20 years. And so that's that's a lot of upper body movements like this. It's a lot of, and it's also a lot of separation and isolation between your upper body and your lower body, because the upper body has this kind of, this kind of flowing movement with your hands and arms versus your lower body, which is busy working at very intense footwork, rhythmic footwork. Um, it's specifically what, it is, what it's doing. And, and so you've got to really divorce your upper from your lower in terms of the speed of your movements. And you have to maintain this, this kind of very calm, controlled presence with your upper body. Meanwhile, your lower, you know, your feet are just moving at a mile a minute. And, and also it, you have to be very centered. You have to have the poise and the core for that to work because you also don't want, 
to have this crazy footwork going on underneath and all of it reflected in, you know, like shuddering or shaking with your upper body, you have to really, that's where the isolation comes into play, where you have this, this separation of the two. But it's separated, but you're consciously thinking of and controlling both elements at the same time and at all times. And the same happens with belly dancing. I, I did a little bit of that as well. Um, I, the reason I actually stopped flamenco was my knees actually started having problems as I as I got older and after 20 years of doing it. And uh, so then I, I started doing some belly dancing as well. And again, there's a lot of isolation work that happens with that. So this is something that is just really deeply ingrained into me, into my muscle memory, because I've done over two decades of intense dancing. And so I cannot actually do any physical movement type things without consciously always taking into account the upper body and how that plays and how the core interacts with your lower uh, movements and all of that. So it's, it is an integrated thing to me. I can't divorce it. Um, and, and that's, that's, it's like, there's this isolation that's happening, but it is a singular thing. It's a singular thing that's happening with your whole body. And so when I skate, my core and my balance is always something that I am conscious of. And, and it is something that comes into play with all the movements that I do. Someone on the uh, Instagram uh, chat said, holding the center axis while swirling the upper body weight supported by strong footwork. So yeah, it's a nice way of thinking of it. Um, what else we got here, Andrew? Uh, what are we, what are we missing on, on the chat here? We've kind of been having our own conversation. Um, yeah, uh, T.S. Uh, is asking if Steph wants to show off some endless neon wheels or rocking club forever. Stephanie, I think you, you should know that if you do want neon wheels, there's uh, Brad knows a guy, apparently. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, I, I would definitely look in contact with that guy because I want some color wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we now have the uh, we have pink. We have sets of uh, we have pink seventy sixes and neon yellow seventy sixes. But the sixty eight still only come in. Um, oh, so we still still need to use the cloud sixty eights. Yeah, let us know in the comments what what color you want to see next for the sixty eights because um, eventually we'll have to order more. Do we do black? My vote is for do pink. We do white. Pink. Pink 68s. Pink 68s. That would look good because then you could do, you can mix and match with the neon yellow. I, neon I could be down with that. <laughs> or, or is yellow more popular? And let us know in the comments what you want to see. Oh, Andrew, you know what I realized the other day? What's that? We, we never do the YouTube thing. Everybody needs to like and subscribe. <laughs> like, we've never asked once. We're such terrible YouTubers. So, uh, or maybe after, we were the best YouTubers because we never. We yeah, never or we're the best. But yeah, after, you know, when this video is, is, uh, you know, the live stream ends and it's, it's up on the, the channel, please, please like, and subscribe. Like, I think we're getting close to a thousand subscribers. It'd be great to, uh, help us go over that threshold. Um, I don't know if anything happens, but we, <laughs> we can say we have more than a thousand subscribers. If we reach enough, you get a cool play button or something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I'm also being reminded. Thank you, sir. Like and sub. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, I'm also being reminded uh, that TS asked about Mercury CSs. Oh, surprise you know, release. So <laughs> the Mercury frames across the board are the thing that I, they're just way more popular than I, I keep like recognizing and everybody wants them. So we really should make them in offer. We really should make or offer the Mercury finish for the arc CS. Um, mm -hmm. So Andrew, next time I need to reorder, remind me, and maybe we'll make that happen. Just Mercury everything, Brad. That's just Mercury cool. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I need some. I need some Mercury's. Oh, there we go, Stephanie. Okay, Mercury. there you go. Done. <laughs> it's Done. Stephanie, We're it. it's happening. Let's go. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Andrew asks that turquoise color on the prototype wheel has gotten me the most positive comments. You know, I have been thinking about adding a new wheel color, and like a turquoise blue was high on my list. Um, could, be, could be. I think these are a little more green than I would do. I don't know how this is coming across, but yeah. I like the I like the turquoise ones better. These. No, 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 the other ones. Yeah, the, ones yeah, the, the more blue ones. Yeah. yeah. Blue. But less, those are kind of like um cloudy, smoky, milky. Yeah, they're a little smoky. 
Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah, I want to do something a little more vibrant in that color. Um, Mercury, someone asked, Mercury finished on the swans. You're going to have to ask Mr. Swan himself. Yeah, he's in the chat right now. He's in the chat, so if you get his <laughs> approval, then maybe we make it happen. Um, someone wants to know if a brown, yes, I don't think we'll be making any brown wheels. Uh, not, not. You can just happen. go skate, skate in the, skate in the mud for. Just for skate that. in the mud, yeah. Uh, Daniel um, asks, yeah, does dying affect wheel performance? The answer is slightly yes. Does it? In my opinion, have I think. You died, have you died a wheel? Oh, about. I thought this was a question about do colors affect wheel performance. I've color, never actually. Color, before. color does in general. I think if you if you die, you die like a if you use a, a writ die. Um, Maybe as long as you're not changing the color, like if you make it really dark. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what happens when you do like a water based dye. No clue. I know. I know yeah. a lot of quad skaters do that because they always want to color coordinate with their fancy, fancy cute skates. Yeah. Could be. I've never more, tried. More colors in in ninety. Yeah. We. Um. I think if I add a color, I'll probably add it to all the main sizes, which would be um, 80, 84, and ninety, mm -hmm. uh, and seventy six. Um. Let's see what. Other questions did we have, Andrew, that we wanted to topics that we wanted to cover regarding the ArcCS? Um, uh, you know, there's only one more question, Brad, that I really see that we that we haven't touched on, okay. um, and that's on uh, will there ever be a version where we won't need rocker axles? I think the answer to that question is probably no, just given the flexibility they offer. But I know, you know, for a frame uh, like the Swan frame, you know, Nicholas really wanted that frame to be dialed in right for that particular setup that was made. Really yeah. for this kind of you know urban style skating, really you know precise maneuverability. So that's why on that one, I think Brad and Nicholas decided to do no rocker axles. But on something like the CS frame that I think is trying to appeal to you know such a kind of wide range of people, both kind of you know again the smaller foot wizard skater or the artistic kind of urban ice skater, I think it makes a lot of sense to have those rocker axles. I, I don't know what do you th what do you think, Brad? Um yeah, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. It definitely offers a lot of flexibility, especially for somebody that doesn't have, you know, a big annual budget to spend on skate skate gear. Um, mm -hmm. The my response to that person on Instagram was, um, you know, is there universal agreement on how much rocker people want? <laughs> right, and, right. Can you I find mean, everyone I know who's using the ArcCS? It's not everyone, but but I know I know people using ArcCSs on all four of the settings as yeah. their as their setting. So yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Like you, you would have to get all of us to agree on which one we want. I think if I made Stephanie a frame specifically for Stephanie, she would want it one way. I would want it a different. Like I want the lowest rocker setting. You probably you would go for like the third setting, and mm -hmm. Andrew would. I don't know what Andrew would go for. I'd, I'd like the toe up and the heel down. Cause yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> see, to, he, he's making it even more complicated. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 We couldn't agree. Here we go. Who do you think did the best review of the CS ever? Um, <laughs> I don't know, Drew. <laughs> I think Ari did. <laughs> and his film, was that his review or? No, actually, I think he's got a. He's got his own review on it. I don't know if he's got a review, but anyway. Yeah, no, Drew did a really great review. Very, um, very technical review. So everybody should head over to the City Blades YouTube channel and check out Drew's review of the Arc CS. If you're into like, if you want to continue this nerdy discussion and maybe kick it up a notch uh, on the technical side of skating um you know drew's got some got a very insightful review um let's see what else uh someone asked how how fast are they for a, for a route or long distances mm -hmm. i think we touched on this earlier it wouldn't be my choice on a trail skate but it doesn't suck like if you were skating them with you know around the, the city with your friends like you wouldn't be struggling to keep up with somebody who's on four by 90. Um, and they are infinitely better than those skates you mentioned, Brad, that try to mimic the ice skate with those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like an off, a, off ice yeah. or a pick skate or Snow White or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we talked about the rotation, mm -hmm. uh, boot sizes. 
Um, can, I, can I say another thing about the advantage yeah. of, of ArcCS over, over the ICE emulation type frames? Yes. Is, yeah, is that it. they are ICE emulating frames. They are, they are trying as hard as they can be to, to mimic the experience of ICE, but it is, it is a different thing having a, a metal toe pick that can kind of drag across the ice versus a rubber toe stop that if you drag it, you stop, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I have found because I've tried this. <laughs> and it, it made me realize just how much I use the toe wheels in my, in my arc CSs or any of my other frames, how much that comes into play anytime my foot even slightly unflexes that my, my weight is shifting to the toe and how that then affects the types of moves and things that I can do. And it is just a much more fun experience to be <laughs> to be rolling around on RCSs than to be work to be trying um, an ice emulating type of frame because those are those are really meant for being within a contained space and doing ice figure skating tricks. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I do know actually one one inline figure skater though who has gone on the San Francisco Friday Night Skate, which is a 15 mile skate throughout the city, in over the hills and everything in an off ice figure skate, which wow. impresses me. I don't know how much yeah. <laughs> to do that. Not not my <laughs> take. But, yeah. It is definitely not the experience that most people are going to want to have. Whereas doing that with the ArcCS is definitely something that would be a lot more fun and doable for most people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Gosh, that's crazy. Some of those hills that they do in the, the Friday Night Skate is, is, is a lot. <laughs> Bruna says the uh, CS is very forgiving and agile for urban skating. Lots of fun. Yeah, I would agree. It's, uh... Great. Yeah, I think I think we've touched on honestly most things, Brad. Um, but yeah, if you're curious, definitely try this frame for yourself. It's a it's it's a knockout, I think, and it, it's really unique, I think, in the the Arc lineup because you know the Arc and the Arc ES. Really, the Arc ES, I think, is a slightly longer version of the Arc frame that's good for bigger foot people. But I think the Arc CS is is something a little bit special, and and that's, yeah, yeah, for that kind of urban ice skating style. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's anything like Arc CS on the market. I mean. Um, mm -hmm this was this is the i think the own this is the only commercial five wheel product that was specifically designed for smaller footed people and women yeah um and so i'm you know i'm proud are that there we any were able to do that five by 72s out there there are but like i said like you know we can cut i think we touched on it at the beginning um I believe that this is a much higher performing setup because you get the same overall wheelbase as five by 72, the same pivot spacing, mm -hmm. but it's lower, which makes it, you know, the frame itself is going to be stiffer, more responsive. It's lighter. Um, it's faster because of the, you know, the wheels. And another thing I didn't really touch on, but we did talk about at some length in the other arc episode we did is, um these wheels with these cores like this complement of wheels tends to be i think it's lighter than five by 72. Hmm. just because you have um you're not you're not putting all the mass into the urethane on the wheels so so yeah, yeah. um and you know the less mass you have hanging off the end of your foot the easier and faster you can swing your leg around and execute these movements you know, like once you swing your foot this way, you you have to use a lot of energy to get it go to go back the other way if your frame and your wheels, you know, weigh more than this setup. So I love how low it is also because that just really gives you a sense of being connected to the ground and just like having having as little as possible between you and those movements. Yeah. Yeah, the low right the low right height's great. And Brad, my last question, when is ever going to be able to buy those pink axles? Oh, uh, so. <laughs> They're so nice. Okay, so <laughs> we're not going to be able to make these pink rocker axles, but Mad. I do intend to 
let's turn around this way. Um, I do intend to offer these at some point. Uh, I'm just getting them finalized. So exciting. Yeah, we will have some aluminum axles coming. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got we've got some cool stuff in the works for this summer and beyond. I think people are going to be excited for what's coming. Um, someone TS is asking if we're going to do uh, complete skate setups with those new FR Neos. You know, I'm very curious to try those boots out. Have you guys seen them? No, I haven't. You haven't seen yeah, them? I think I think you showed me a picture, Brad. They're yeah. They're very they're very nice looking. Yeah, they're nice looking. I think they have like um I don't know what you want to call the technology. It's like where there's like a different type of plastic for part of the shell. So it's like softer and more conforms more to your foot on the, the upper part of the shell. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they look cool. So I'd love to try them. Um, let's see what, uh, what other questions we got. Now's your, ch now's your chance to get your questions in so we can, you know, anything right, you want Daniel's, to ask Daniel's really going for it. Terracotta. No, wheels? no, <laughs> sorry, dude. <laughs> Nope. Uh, and then toe ticket, uh, 90 ES with an octopus again. I, yeah, I think the octopus is is done. It was a limited Tired. edition, but it's not to say we might not see future designs from Stephanie. Um, so I'm sure yeah. she could whip something up that's amazing for. <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to talk and come up with some new ideas stuff. Poor, poor Daniel. Yeah, man. He, he wants any any flavor of red, orange, brown. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Oh, oh, on the FR Neo, it's yeah, dual density. Thanks. Thanks uh, for yeah, clarifying yeah. that. Um, yeah, but I, I think with that, um, Stephanie, thank, thanks so much uh, for, for joining us tonight. It was really great to, to have you on the show and uh, talk about all things ArcCS. And, and I think the really awesome style that, yeah, you bring to, to the wizard community. And again, I, I can't say it enough. Go check out some of her videos. You have some great tutorials too. You know, you're really really good teacher and instructor, I think. So yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Check out some of Stephanie stuff. If, if anybody else agrees with me that Stephanie is the number one female wizard skater. You're making me hide right now. now. Let, Agreed. Plus Agreed. one, plus no. one in the comments. <laughs> plus one, plus one. <laughs> uh, um, all right. If anyone, yeah, if there's nothing left, um, then yeah, we'll see, we'll see everybody the beginning of next month, we'll try and get back on our normal schedule of the first Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, yeah, again, for Brad uh, for yeah, recovering from COVID. Well, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, I was sick for a while. I'm still, I'm like 75 per percent. I'm probably going to have to take a nap after this. Um, but <laughs> oh, Drew said, where's the yeehaw? Oops, this one. Give, give him a yeehaw. Give him a yeah, yeehaw. we didn't do a hot or not tonight, um, but I'll give you all give you all a yeehaw. Yeehaw! There we go. Yeehaw! All right. Yeah. All right. There we go. We got two and a half yeehaws. There we um, go. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll pick up we'll pick up next month at the the normal time. If yeah, if you guys have uh, thoughts on what you want the next episode to be about, let us know. Um, what else? What did we miss, Andrew? Anything else? I think that's it. Stephanie, anything else for the, the endless crew out there and all of our I know almost thoughts. thousand YouTube subscribers? No, nothing else. Yeah. Well, again, <laughs> thanks. I wonder how many core doing. points Brad has. Oh, I've got like five because I can drop I can drop in at the skate park. So <laughs> I used to have more when I was a teenager, but now I'm old. <laughs> Yeah, five five yeehaws for for Stephanie. Uh, yeah. Again, thanks oh. everybody for. Oh yeah, one last question. This is it. This is the last one. This is the last one. We'll cut you guys off. All right. Yes, we 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 are making round profile. Where's my round profile? I don't know where it's behind my monitor here. Oh, that's right. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're we're just, we're waiting on the eighty four millimeter samples. Um, we're just gonna do a quick test, and then we're putting everything into production. So maybe this summer. We'll have them. They've been in the works a while, but um, Chinese New Year always slows down. Yeah, slows down stuff. Well, you'll be able to mix up your favorite wheel profiles or not. What I don't know what our rec recommendations will be. We'll have to see. Uh, but thanks again, everybody, uh, for joining us. Um, thanks again, Stephanie, uh, and we will see you guys next month for episode nine. All right, later. Night, everybody. Later. Good night.